Royal palaces are living entities. They adapt and evolve to fit the fashion of their times and the often grandiose personalities of those who live in and lord over them. They become projections, mediums that send the message that the owner is rich, powerful, and to be obeyed. Case in point, England's Hampton Court Palace, just 10 miles from the heart of London as the crow flies, somewhat further if you come by way of the meandering River Thames. Hampton Court is most associated with Henry VIII, but it didn't start out to be the palace of a king. It was built to be the palace of a prince, a prince of the church, the powerful and well-connected Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. Wolsey wanted a residence befitting his ecclesiastical position, something similar to the Renaissance palaces lived in by his Italian counterparts. Work began in 1514. In addition to his religious duties, Wolsey served as chancellor to the king, making him the second most powerful person in England. It also made him a lot of enemies. Wolsey fell out of favor with the king after failing to convince the Pope that Henry should be allowed to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon in order to marry Anne Boleyn. The Cardinal was arrested and all of his property seized. Henry took Hampton Court for himself and began a massive expansion in order to accommodate the full court of over 1,000. That meant large kitchens, wine cellars, a dining hall, and apartments for his new wife. Unfortunately, Anne failed to produce a male heir, which led to her arrest and execution on trumped-up charges of adultery. The next mistress of Hampton Court was Jane Seymour, who did produce a male heir, but died two weeks after giving birth. Next was a short marriage to Anne of Cleves, which ended in divorce. This was followed by Henry's marriage to Catherine Howard, who met the same fate as Anne Boleyn. Legend says Catherine ran to Henry to proclaim her innocence and to beg for mercy, but was dragged away by guards. Many claim to have encountered the ghost of the frightened queen, as well as Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, and even King Henry himself. King Henry died in 1547. His daughter, Elizabeth I, visited but did not use Hampton Court as her principal residence. Subsequent monarchs found the old Tudor-era palace dated. By the time of King William and Queen Mary, the Palace of Versailles outside Paris was the new standard for royal residences. They decided to build a new palace and gardens adjacent to the old palace, which would then be demolished. Before that could happen, the Queen died and the king lost interest, which helped to save the building for history. The last king to live in Hampton Court was George II, who reigned from 1727 to 1760. Hampton Court is essentially two palaces, the Tudor Palace of Henry VIII and the Baroque Palace of William and Mary. Today, it is one of the most visited palaces in England. Its proximity to London and tragic past seem to have given it a new lease on life.